Hello everybody and welcome back to a new video on my YouTube channel, I'm Nicholas and after, as you can see, over a year we're back with a super massive games tier list yeah, I actually remember I did do a third one back then but I remember that that video had some very weird audio issues that luckily haven't been reoccurring since then um, maybe I will redo that at one point, who knows but yeah, we're back with um, a uncut um, tier list with no script where we just go over a topic and just tier list these characters that we all love so much before we do that though a bit of beforehand stuff, um, because, well, why am I just now doing one again after such a long time? Very easy answer, actually. I've talked about it a lot before already. Um, I still have so many videos. Yeah, I've recently posted about it. I still have so many videos in the vault, basically, you know. The Core vs. Unto Dawn. The characters of the Dark Pages Anthology games ranked. The games ranked themselves all together and stuff like that. And so many more little niche videos. All of that had basically been already worked on over a year ago, but I never got around to finish or release them because, well, it was like half a year after um, the release of The Devil and Me where I was like, okay, let's take a step back, let's wait till we get new information till we are back into a hype phase before we start rolling out the content again. And 2024 was pretty dry when it came to that, but now 2024, we got the Unto Dawn remake coming up, the casting of Frank Stone, hopefully soon information about the Rector of 8020. If there's any time to finally go back into the Supermassive Games content release, it's now. And we're doing this, and I thought, well, let's do a topic that's, in my opinion, very important for these games, horror in general, because what is more important in a horror movie, in a horror game, great deaths. I've made already a ranking video for the Cory and Unto Dawn. No idea why I haven't done one yet for the DPA. I should definitely do that as well. That means that we are going to be... What we're going to be doing is look over here into the tier list and how the entire thing is going to be worked. And that is that. Okay, this is how the tier list is looking like. We have four tiers in general. The best devs in the series, the best of the best, really good devs, which are really, really solid, like, genuinely really, really good. Then those that are like, whatever, not a good, not bad. And then the pretty lame ones, where it's like, I don't know, very straightforward, they're very lame, it's always the same thing, something like that. And in this case, we're actually going for a bit more characters than the other two tier lists, because they were only the main characters you can play. But obviously, deaths don't just affect those, but also the side characters around them, which is why we have a few more involved this time, which is why I also don't want to waste any more time. One last thing, you may notice there's no music playing or something like that. I didn't do that back in the day either, because I think you should decide how you want to experience this tier list. If you want to have music in the background alongside with me, Pick your own, rather than me picking one that you may not enjoy, and if you only want to hear my voice. There we go. Alright, one last sip. And we start things off. This is obviously going to take a while. Um, I do gave myself a little bit of a help sheet. I'm on my second monitor. Let's go. First off, the filler tier. These are characters that either don't have any deaths, or if they do... I don't know, it's just not worth talking about it. Like these two, I think she can die, Kaylee always dies, so does he. But these deaths are like, whatever. You could put them in the pretty lame category, but they're like such minor characters that, you know, you don't need that much. You just throw them to the side, okay? We go through things in game order. It means from Unto Dawn to Man of Eden, to Little Hope, Towns of Ashes, to the Quarry, to the Devil. It means we're starting with Until Dawn. Are we kicking things off with Ashley? And Ashley doesn't have many deaths. She has more, like, she can die very late. Um, and that is in one case of decapitation at the trapdoor. And then getting her eyes coked out in the lodge, which is a very rare as well, by the way. So Ashley dying, by the way, is really, like, one of the most avoidable character deaths in the entire game. So, so many people have Ashley survive her, their games because, well, she has many options. I do will say, though, even though it's not a lot of deaths, they're pretty great. Decapitation is iconic, it's definitely one of the most memorable deaths in the game, and I scoped out, even though it's a bit copy-pasted from Emily, still pretty solid. Definitely goes up here, for sure. Beth is a weird case, because similar to these characters, yes, she always dies, she always has the same death, 
but she's a very important character to the story, and so is her death. And I find her death to be very impactful, plus it just completely fuels the entire story a lot, so I would have felt bad to not include it. Is it good enough to be put into really good deaths? Even though it's only one death that always happens the same way? Honestly, yes, because like mentioned, falling from a big height like that with your sister in your arms and it ultimately leads to you getting eaten by your own sister. That's kind of dope. I love talking about deaths in video games, by the way, because I will say settings like this it would usually get me onto an offender list or something, but okay. Next up is Chris. And Chris has um, basically the same type of death, which is always a decapitation, but in various different ways. And those various ways are, in my opinion, with the story involved, among the best in the series. From Ashley either being in complete shock over seeing her boyfriend or, you know, someone she loves um, get killed, to getting him killed on purpose, to, um, you know, Chris finding Ashley's head and then getting decapitated because of that, you know, from above. Incredible. It's basically always the same thing, but the way it's done, the way the story is involved with it, so good, okay? In terms of both visual and story impact, incredible. And next up is Emily. I don't think I gotta... Okay, Emily, 100%, not just one of the best characters in the series. Her deaths are insane. From the eyes, yeah, to getting burned in the launch with the others, to getting shot in the head by her ex-boyfriend, to especially getting crushed in the grinder. Whew, that is an easy number one. Or like, very high. Actually, I'm not sure if I want to do this here as well. Or like, just have them all in the same tier, but not like, you know, rate them individually in each tier. But if we would, then Emily's definitely up top already, so far, for now. Honestly, is it gonna be... It's gonna be hard to beat alone the shot in the, in the face and face afterwards and the rock grinder damn now hannah obviously similar case if she dies she always dies it's always the same death but that death is incredible again it says deaths here but like you know it's really good it's really impactful it's a very stunning finale to the game and like mentioned i really wonder if there was ever an idea to not have her die because that's actually a what if scenario I want to look at at one point. I think I've talked about it. I want to start a what if series for Unto Dawn um, in anticipation of the remake where we talk about different scenarios. And one of them would be if it's possible for the Wendigo to survive and maybe have an early ending like in the quarry. Would be very interesting to think about. But yeah, she definitely mm. got only one always happening there, but that one is very good. Jessica, I must honestly say, I wouldn't necessarily call it lame, but it's thus far definitely the weakest. Yeah, it's always the jaw ripped out, which is a cool visual, and it's brutal, and it's alright, but like, it's always that, and I don't know, it's just, in comparison to the others, it's just really not as good, unfortunately, or like, just not as crazy. I kind of want to put her below the others, yeah. Josh, on the other hand, also similar to other characters, only has one death that can happen. But that death is brutal and also very impactful. Yeah, the crushing the head like that, bare hands, um, because he couldn't recognize his sister. That's very good. I wouldn't consider it among the best deaths in this series. Wait, would I? Actually, wait, I think I did consider it among the best death in Unto Dawn, right? Hmm, I didn't do my research that properly. I didn't rewatch my video back then, but I actually could remember that that one was very high, if not even at the top. It's a, it's a really good death. It really is. It's such a brutal visual, and like mentioned, the story impact behind it. Fuck it, we put him in there as well. It's a really good one. It's like mentioned, only then one singular one for him, but it's such a strong one. It's visually so strong. It's on the brutality level, among the highest in the series for sure. And like mentioned, the story behind it also. You know, it's a perfect combination of everything that could make a kill incredible. And that's something where we got to put him up here as well. 
And as you may see, Antidon is one of the best things about Antidon are genuinely the deaths of the characters because Mike, similar case, also only has a handful of deaths, which got very late, which is either getting burned or getting himself burned. And that's where we come in because obviously other people have the getting burned to death as, death as well. But he has that one death in there that I personally find so incredible. Even though it obviously is the same thing as burning to death. The thing with the, the lighter, where he like sacrifices himself with that last smirk on his face and he does that to ignite the entire mansion. That's honestly too good. It's genuinely one of the best death sensations. This is not a thing. In some ways, this is also basically a ranking about deaths in the series. Actually, somebody recommended me that when I asked for tier list topics, but it was like, I can't rank each individual death. I'm sorry, it's too much, okay? Um, but this is going up here just for that. That death, or like, that, yeah, that death in general. Like, the death combines a lot of things, not just the way he dies, but everything around it. And that last effort to get rid of the Wendigo, it's insane. Matt has actually a nice variety of deaths from um, falling down the cliff to getting hooked on the spear to getting his face smashed in. Nice variety. Not as good as some of the deaths above here. Still very brutal ones as everything. I do think that would, you know, good variety, good deaths in general. I wouldn't put him up here though. Like when people think of the best deaths in the game, I think I did actually have his hook in the top five too. Ah, but I don't think it's up here. Okay, I don't think it's up here. Or should it be? I get no script or anything. I kind of made myself some thoughts, but like I don't have a proper tier list next to me already that I'm not going after. Ah, nah, nah. Again, they're brutal and cool, and the visuals are nice and everything, but nah. It's fine to put him here, 100%. Now Sam though, I must say, similar case to Jessica, only one death. It's a brutal one at that, sure, but like, you know, I don't know, it kind of, mm. what I call the pretty lame, honestly, for the fact that Sam is the final girl and this is like literally her only possible death at all, yeah, literally the only possible version of it is you know, it might be pretty lame. And it's, it's like very quick and, you know, like... Honestly, yeah. Given how cool of a character Sam is and how long she survives, her only death that you can possibly have with her is kind of too uneventful, yeah? Not like a big spectacle, you know, that you would think would happen. It's a very quick, uh, to the stomach, and that's it. And she has a silly death face after that. So yeah, we're putting her down there. <laughs> now, once again, similar case to Bear for Hannah. Always dies, always the same way. It's a really good one though. It's a very impactful one. And if you were to have a no character dice run, his death would still be in there. And it's a very good moment. It's definitely one of the best shocking moments in the game by far. It really shows... Oh, Fuck, we're, you know, oh no, this is real, this is, this is, so man, definitely along here as well. Again, now maybe I do should do these little rankings within the tiers, because then I definitely would be putting, like that probably. Emily further on top, we do this, yeah, this is how I would have it this far. That's with Unto Dawn, yeah? Sam definitely the lamest, Jessica's kinda... Whatever, did some really good deaths all around for a lot of characters, and then some of the best deaths in the series for four characters. Four. That's nearly half the field. Unto Dawn is great with the deaths, one of the best parts about the game for sure. Man of Medan is a very interesting case. Mm. The thing about Man of Medan is which I will also go into more detail when we get to the character ranking video. All of the characters can go through the same things for the most part, which means that like, you know, it's like basically the most non-main character-ish game because like everybody here 
like could do that thing at the end there and you know like could be at the same place as another character could be which is really interesting in my opinion a cool thing to do especially after unto dawn which had all of these characters very isolated into their own things this obviously does mean all of them have very repeating deaths it's just a very few unique ones between each of the individual characters which makes it kind of difficult to you know individually rank them too much before we do that though we have both um Oh god, uh, I don't, do I remember their names? The two soldiers, Joe and... God, what was his name? This is Joe. Oh, that's Joe. Or? <laughs> Either way, their deaths are honestly pretty good. Both of them. Um, because it's, you know, this entire hallucination thing leading to either shooting him or stabbing him. Or, you know, dying of the heart attack and stuff like that. And honestly, both of that is all really good. Really solid way to open the game, yeah. For for both parties involved. Like, just to set the tone, right? Really nice. Can really not complain about that. Really, really good. Now, like mentioned, all of these characters have very, very similar deaths. Um, Conrad has one unique one where he... Which I've had myself where he um, jumped off the top of the ship or something because the ghost came at him and, you know, that's actually how my Conrad died and I'm still thinking like, god damn it, how did I realize that? Um, do the other characters have too many more unique deaths? I think Fliss has another one. I think Alex is one with the neck or something, but honestly not too much. Either way, all the different deaths these characters can go through are all really really solid yeah there's so much in there you know from the soldiers shooting them at the end to once the all the hallucination deaths all the hallucination deaths are so cool the one with the rats and everything that you can have happen at the end there um genuinely speaking i believe man of medan delivers in terms of not just you know the characters all having these um you know opportunities to become the main character for you but also the deaths as well all of these hallucination deaths are really really great julia we haven't mentioned it at all in my opinion also has an incredible death um which is the one with the sickness that one i'm luckily it didn't have it but like imagine at the end of the game like, imagine my case. I had Alex and Julia left. These three died. Imagine at the end of the game, <laughs> she just dies too. Because of a decision he did very in the beginning. Oh, that's insane. And then such a, you know, like, these are the married couple too, so oh my god, imagine. What I'm trying to say here is, the deaths are all very similar to another, or like, they can go through the same deaths, but all of these deaths are honestly so, so great. That I must honestly say, I'm putting all of them up here. Genuinely. I think Brad and Conrad don't have as many insane ones. But like, I'm not sure if they can go through the, the kitchen thing as well. But it's like, oh wait, Conrad actually. Conrad also. Oh, the death with Conrad, where he's left alone on the ship. Yeah. Where the others leave. He left early on in the game. By the way, also still one of my favorite things about the game, the fact that that can work. He leaves early on in the game on his own, and then comes back later when the rest escaped, and he's stuck on the boat and succumbs to the madness. Oh, that one's also so insane, dude. Oh my goodness. That one, the one with the rats, the one with the sickness. They really had to follow up a very difficult task without doing or like competing with the level of insane deaths and Hunter Dawn, and they did it with Man of Medan, 100%. So good, yeah? Many people give Man of Medan slack, rightfully, for, you know, just not having that same flavor or being a bit too, I don't know, too many jump scares is one of my, my biggest um, flags with it. And that the characters aren't as exciting and memorable and whatnot, but when it comes to the deaths and the settings and everything, it's really, really good. Genuinely. Genuinely gotta put all of them up here. I'd be a bit ex over excessive and some people would only say maybe that, yeah. But man, you can already see by the way. 
Yeah, maybe I'm too generous. Maybe I should be a bit more be like, mm -hmm -hmm, you know, but like, I don't know. I think they all should be up here because each of them have such deaths that are just so damn insane. Yeah, X can stab himself and I think Brad too. I'm not sure though actually. Oh, maybe you should check that real quickly. Hold on. I know that Fliss also has a similar one where... Wait, no, I think yeah, Brad as well. I think each of these characters also have the death where the other person kills him because I think they're the monster. <sighs> Man of then is hard to keep up when it comes to that because as I like mentioned, so much going on. Which is, by the way, still in my opinion though, like very commendable in Supermassive's case. The amount of different paths and outcomes they have in Man of Medan and the way the characters work together or like the way they're... The things intervene and everything, man. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Possible deaths, expand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. Stabbed in the stomach by Fliss. The drowning. You can get killed by. Oh, true. You can also get. Mm hmm. The cargo door, the electrocution. Yep, 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 yep. Also, like I mentioned, yeah. Literally, all of these characters have that death with the soldiers. Alone, that qualifies all of them, basically. Because that ending is one of the craziest endings in Supermassive games, if you think about it. If all of your characters go through the most insane shit for five hours straight, you have that entire thing with calling the military to get help, and then they mow you down. In the last second of the game, all of the characters just died. Because you entered a ship with something that they've been trying to hide for decades, and, you know, they're like... Shit, we gotta keep the secret. <laughs> you know? That alone actually qualifies all five of them. But like I mentioned, so many other great individual deaths too. Finally, not that we have three villains here too. Olsen, pretty solid deaths. Very solid deaths, honestly. Um, from the cargo door thing to also getting electrocuted and stuff like that. Solid. He, I think, only has two potential deaths. But these are also really good. I think he also has one where he succumbs to the madness, especially like where the soldiers aren't called, he's on his own basically. Yeah, definitely also up here. In Junior, I have to put him up here as well, because he can also go through the same thing with the soldiers. But his death where he, you know, does that, also one of the most memorable potential deaths you can go through. And I went through it as well. It's still probably the moment in Man of Medan that I... Think about the most. When I think of my Man of Medan playthrough, I think about no moment more than Junior first shooting Fliss and then himself. And like I mentioned, it could also be Junior in that moment or Brad or something. So yeah, like I mentioned, Man of Medan, it's very weird without the deaths work and everything. But no matter which character goes for each of the deaths, they are insane. Which means Man of Medan's deaths are insane. Yeah. So many up here, so many up here, like all of them up here. Man of Medan, honestly. Might be a bit underrated. I feel like many people don't give the game enough credit. Yes, again, the story is a, like it's more about the gameplay and the um, characters. Yeah, the characters, like mentioned, a bit more bland in comparison to other games. And the story is a bit slow, and mm, but the setting is great, the deaths are incredible, the pathing is great. It really has a lot of good things to it. <sighs> Little Hope. Little Hope is. The most unique one in the entire series, by far. Both in terms of the characters and the story. Yeah, we don't gotta we don't gotta explain that. Andrew has only one death. The character. Yeah, like he obviously like can't get arrested or just walk off or something. He only has one potential death. But I'm sorry, that death is also among the best in the series. Yeah. The one where he shoots himself at the end because he couldn't find peace with what happened all those years ago. Maybe even involving the jump scare with the little girl. So great. So, so good. I likely didn't go through it. Yeah, I'm still the most mad about the fact that I nearly made it through with all characters alive and it was only Taylor that died. But that death, oh, it's such an insane ending, you know, to, to the game. Angela is... She has two, I think. The one with the oozing, with the blah, you know, in the face. But I think there was another one. Oh yeah, getting shot by ourselves. That's pretty good. That's really good, even. I'd put it like far up here somewhere. Oh, I, 
How do I rank this here, by the way? How would I rank this? Would I rank this above some of the Unto Dawn characters? Like, if I rank it above one, I'd have to rank it for everyone, you know? I think the deaths are better than Chris's. Mm, not necessarily Josh's. I think I guess we do this. Yeah, that's fine. They're all in the same tier. That that's what matters the most. Um, yeah, the getting you know shooting Angela thing is not as good as it's in like other games. You could do it similarly, but so pretty good. Um, honestly, Daniel, he only has one type of death the entire game through. And it's getting stabbed. And honestly, that's pretty lame. I don't know. I didn't see his death because he survived. But like when I looked for his deaths, it's like always the same thing. It's just kind of boring comparison, similar to like it's just a quick stab and that's it. You know what I mean? It's kind of. Well, it's like having. It's like in the Purge movies where like 95% of the deaths are from gunshots, where like. Well, I've seen that now already. And time to this to the first five minutes of the movie, you know what I mean? So here it's kind of like kinda of lame. Yeah, like mentioned, the jaw right getting ripped out, the visual on top of that really great, but for these two cases here it's just And that's it. And it's just kinda of boring. Mm. John is a bit also not that insane, you know, like the face getting squished and everything is kinda of cool. But it's also not that good. I'd put it in here. It's not lame. I think it's only a cool and unique way to get killed. But um I wouldn't compete it up here with those. Would I call it better than John getting ripped off? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Now, as much slack as I give Taylor for being probably the most boring and most unlikable character, or one of the most unlikable characters, her deaths are great. From getting burned to the you know, Taylor has some really good deaths, really good ones. Yeah, I gotta give her credit to that. She she isn't that you know fun when she's alive, but when she dies, it's it's, it's a spectacle. <laughs> oh, I'm so mean. Uh, would I put her mm, like that? Sure. Now, once again. Very like basically the same characters. The fates are very similar in that sense, but there's that one death each of these characters have um, that I find so insane. Uh, by the way, I don't think I can remember the names. But Hulu Chuck, sorry, it's been too long. I would have known it a year ago, but not anymore. Um, the one death they have, like each of them can die in the way where, you know. They get killed as the uh, ancient one, but the death that I particularly find so insane, and among honestly the craziest if you think about it, the one where after in the beginning they get attacked, they get cocooned for so long, and it's Celine that then has to, you know, mercy kill them after they were like, in that state for three thousand years. Bro, imagine you just half your body's missing, you're just suffering there for three thousand years and you can't die. Oh, that's that is genuinely holy moly. I'd honestly put it. Is it mm, again? It's a bit weird to call it a bit of a death because technically the death itself is getting the the pipe into the face, but like, would I put it a bit higher than the other characters here? I wouldn't because they're more side characters, but like the dev itself is still very great and honestly a cool idea given the setting and how the game and the story works. Great idea. Claris. Yeah, we first start with the side characters here. Claris has um, a couple of deaths from getting shot by Jason to just getting killed in general. The explosion death is also there. Her deaths are pretty great. Not not that insane or anything too especially mentionable, like outwardly like the others like both of us like mentioned, or like buffer. But still, not bad. So that's for a side character for sure. Same case for for for, for Mervin. Wait, let me let me fact check. I think Mervin is among the coolest variety. Like he has so many ways to die. From getting 
you know, succumbed like that to getting dragged through the to the short part of um like the what you call it uh the tunnel we get strength through which you can also see in the premonition i think that's what it's called or if he actually makes it all the way to getting just shot there you know plus he got so many good ones he has suffocated he can get the, get the blood loss or get crushed the decapitation is also in there all getting mauled or shot in the head these are all pretty good none of these deaths are like particularly insane in terms of um you know being it's it's as memorable or like as special as the ones above above him here in the tier but really good ones really good so many different ones and all of them are great you love to see it This death was, he, he basically just got shot, right? Honestly, he might have the most boring death of them all. He does can turn into a vampire where he can get killed, which is pretty fun, but... Mm -hmm. It's an impactful death in the beginning, and it affects our character, so I guess I put it here. It's not a good death itself, though. So yeah, I think that's fair. Dar, though. Dar only has one way to die, but that way to die is fantastic. Yeah? That imagery of him getting surrounded by all the vampires and then getting completely mauled to death. That's a really good death. That's really, really good. Put it somewhere here? Maybe above Angela, even? Yeah, even above Angela, I'd say. Really good. Really, really solid. Like I mentioned, one of those deaths that always happen, but it's a really good one. And I mean, the thing with Eric, <laughs> I'm actually, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe oh, it might be in contention with one of the Man of a Dan characters, but Eric has 100% among the most deaths in the entire game, by far. The fact that, like mentioned, the fact that I actually managed to keep him alive and it was Nick at the end that didn't make it out, even though he can only die in the end, is crazy. Like, if, if, it's similar to Eric, like, if Eric dies in your playthrough, don't be sad, he can die, like, 50 times, okay? It's insane. The amount of different ways this guy can die in, like, every chapter is crazy. In the very early on, he can get impaled by falling down. Um, Dar can kill him. Salim could kill him when they first have their standoff. Dar can kill him once more. He could explode by the C4 that gets planted. The Ancient One can destroy him. Or Claris. Both of them. Um, I think Rachel can do it too, crazy. He could also fall from that high place when we get chased by the Ancient One. Once again, the front would out again and pale. The head crush, the ice coke down. There's so many insane deaths there. Even though I must say, none of them individually is among the best deaths. We are rating the individual deaths, we are ranking which character has the best deaths. Eric has a lot of great deaths, but I don't think any of them individually is that crazy. Like, among the best, yeah. He has really good deaths and I will put him very high, honestly, right behind Matt. Maybe even above Matt. Because there's so many different ones that are all really solid. Yeah, I think I will do that. But I don't think he has that one specific death that I would put... That's high, right? Like, yes, there's some gunshots, and Pale One is cool, visual, and everything, but, like, I don't think any of them exceed a level, I would say. Yes, that one is among the best in the entire game. Nah. Yes, really cool devs, a lot of them, but not that good. Where well, I would put it up here, yeah? Like, either of these have. Um, Jason, similar case. A lot of devs. Like, actually, no, he doesn't. He doesn't have many deaths, but the few he has are really good. So we'll put him here as well. Somewhere here. The one that I particularly like, which I wouldn't call one of the best in the series, but that I just personally really enjoy, is the one where he gets grabbed from above, you fail to turn him down, and then he gets dropped from a great height. I find it to be particularly brutal. The way he just gets, like, thrown around, like, just worth nothing, and there's just, you know, it's just a corpse in the background of the massacre. Kind of really like that one, especially it's not one of the best in the series though, but like, 
still really solid test really good deaths nick has a few more unique ones ah oh, but is it one of the best in the series the death that i had with him where he gets completely obliterated by the vampires because of it oh i'm so depressed again about it if i would have made it out alive there with him i would have made it out alive with everyone i'm more mad about that than taylor taylor was like in the middle of the game i didn't care for her too much it was like whatever but with nick we literally fade like on the finish line and the final 30 minutes i'm still so mad about it god damn it um oh, was there one especially like, he has a lot of cool deaths but i don't think there's one especially there's a torn apart one the next snap by the ancient one which you also seen that you know oh he also has that one with the getting from the great height yeah it's mostly the same deaths over and over really good deaths for sure similar level as jason honestly i put it even above jason because he can like die in explosion or like you know die while trying to which is a great sacrifice which um him dying down there by either the vampires or the ancient one kind of makes it a self-sacrifice which i really like Ah, but would I consider one of the best? Ah. Nah. Nick deserves some respect. He's a cool character in my opinion. Hell Mitch is still pretty sad about him getting killed, not just because I lost out on the whole person survive thing, but like just him in general. Ah, but is it good enough to be considered a peer in the league? Oh, maybe we're a bit generous. Yeah. Uh. The thing is, I did it with Mike. I was. The thing is, if Mike doesn't do it in that moment, it wouldn't happen. You know what I mean? If Mike doesn't light the lighter in that moment, the lodge literally doesn't explode. Yeah, because it only happens when Sam is already dead. So in this case, it would be. It's a nest, you know? It's an actual sacrifice. What Nick does is, if he makes it out, it happens either way. Wait, but then the same thing happens with Mike too. I feel like if I have Mike up here for that one death, then maybe Nick should be too. You know what I mean? The difference is, though, like mentioned, Mike does it in a very, especially heroic way with that cool line and imagery. When Nick dies like that, it's actually more of a, well, shit, he just failed at it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Here's the last resort. Here's Sim just failing the mission and, you know, it works out still, but, like, he didn't die because he wanted to and it was a, you know, he wanted sacrifice just because he failed. So, yeah, we keep him here. I think that's fair. Rachel, though. Rachel has some of the... Man, by the way, I think I should put Mike a bit lower here again. His death is incredible, but... Oh, I think here's fine. Yeah, somewhere here. I think that's better. I think... But then again, if... when I did that ranking video... Oh, wait, no. When I did a ranking video, Man of Medan wasn't even included. It was only Hunter Dawn and the Quarry. So I can't say, yeah, back then I ranked Mike above these devs. No, I didn't. Yeah, so... Now, I will, in case I ever rank all the devs, so from all the games together or something like that, that I definitely have to look back at that. Rachel needs to go so high up. To the point where I might even consider her number one, at least, for 30 more seconds. Honestly, uh, yep. Right now, she would be number one. Why? Insane variety of deaths, from, you know, very early on to late into the game. The one with the... Killing herself with the incendiary grenade is very high up. The one that I would consider the... Worst one for her, though, and in this case, best one for her. The one where she gets cocooned. The one where they basically put her into a cocoon. And she's then basically going to be sitting in there, unable to die for centuries, longer. <laughs> That's insanity. That has to be up here, 100%. She has insanely brutal deaths. Insane deaths when you think about the story behind it and the way to it. I would definitely put it onto the number one right now, even above Emily, who, like mentioned, has both visually and story wise some of the craziest ones. 
but this like mentioned only lasts for a couple seconds because I would still consider I've, I've even made a video about it. I have even made a video about that, and I remember it very well. Considered the best death in Supermassive games. That death was Salim, like, you know, getting abandoned by the rest of the crew. But then, like, you know, instead of being mad about it or, like, fighting back, s falls onto his knees, just being sorry to his son. As you see the, the horde approach from behind, and then, uh, you know, that death alone, in my opinion, is still among the most impactful deaths in the entire series. Maybe even the, which is why I made that video. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I 100% made that. I remember making that video. Like, if I make a video like that, then I have to put it onto number one. You know what I mean? Best death in super. Massive games. Is this going to be the first thing that pop up? Might be. Yes! The greatest death across all super massive games. One year ago, Salim accepts his fate. Has to be on number one. Yeah, I made that video back then for a reason. Again, maybe because I was very into the House of Ashes feeling at that point because I played through it, but like... It's in my opinion among the story weight and character connection the undisputed number one. It's not as brutal, obviously. You don't have as much of a visual spectacle as some of the other devs have it. But in terms of impact and how heart-wrenching it would be to have in your game, it takes a kick. The voice is going a bit through, yeah. Um... But we're moving over to the quarry. Abigail has not too many devs. But obviously that one picture there, right? You all have it in your head, the imagery with Nick ripping her head off and her head being on the ground like that. It's easily one of the craziest ones in the entire game. Like, in both the Cory and the series, yeah. I think we gotta give it the respect it deserves. That imagery... I avoided it because I was smart enough to shoot him, but like... I think I had it on... Didn't I even have it on number one? Oh, again, I didn't rewatch that video where I ranked the top 5 deaths and onto Dawn in the Quarry, but I'm pretty sure I had it in the list. I'm pretty sure I had it in the list. Honestly, let me peek a little quickly. I could do it on my PC too, but then, I don't know, I'd have to search and stuff like that. Uh, top 5 deaths to Quarry. Give me a video. Yes. Love to see it. I love when my own video just pops up right away when I type in something, you know what I mean? I'm still mad that video got age restricted, by the way. Oh, I even have... I actually have it on number one. Oh. I actually have that one on number one. Like mentioned, Josh Seb is on number one, too. Hmm. Because another dev I actually was thinking about here that I would put as the greatest devs in the core is actually on three here. Thinking back at it, I maybe wouldn't say that. But I think in terms of story impact, honestly, it's probably still the biggest one. Even though it's not as heart-wrenching as the other one. We can get to it in a moment. First of all, we got Dylan. And actually, at the death of his. On number two there as well, so I think he's gotta get up here too. He has the death with, um... Where Caitlyn can abandon him. Um, in front of the, in front of the, the camp house. And he gets killed like that, which is pretty crazy. But obviously the one we all know is the one up there in the... Oh, what you call it? What you call that thing that he used? Not a lift. You know what I mean, right? Where he gets his arms ripped off and everything. It's an insane visual. It's a very sad moment. His face on top of that. Oh, it's a very good one. Yeah, definitely goes up there along for that. Caitlyn. Caitlyn has a lot of different deaths too. And the one that I highlighted in that video is number three was Caleb puts Caitlyn into the freezer. It obviously qualifies her for this here as well, right away. Yeah, that death is so insane. If you think about it, like Jesus. You just get trapped into the freezer with that monster and you can't go anywhere. 
But would I put it now actually above Abigail after all? Honestly, now nah. because like mentioned, what makes that entire death with Nick and Abigail's entire scene about it, how it could build up the story behind them, and like mentioned, that imagery at the end, you just don't have that with Caitlyn. You do actually see the body, but like it's more just bloody and it's in the end credits, so yeah, I think we can keep it like this. Emma has no death that I would particularly. Put as high or like into the best conversation. Yes, death with the um, where she gets shot with a silver bullet, and you know we then literally realize, oh no, we get one of our friends. Everything about it pretty great. Like mentioned, we've done it before with Angela in some way, and Mike obviously. But yeah, I don't think any of them individually I would consider the best, but really good. Her deaths are pretty pretty solid. I'd put it somewhere here. Like that. Yeah, I think Merwin has some more cool ones though. My dear is Jacob, my dear is Zach. Mm, what would I go with him? I think also more about Oh wait. There's one death with Emma actually. The one with Jacob where Jacob turns into a werewolf in front of her. And then just completely obliterates her, like, head off, like, ripped off, you know? Oh. Dang it, I gotta put it there. That death, I nearly forgot about it. That death, honestly, among the most brutal ones, not just in the quarry, but the entire series. And if anything, it's the most of something in regards to the series, it has to be up there. Yeah, it's easily among one of the most brutal ones. 100%. The imagery of it is just... Insane. Which also means that I should probably put Jacob also up here. Because, yeah, 100%, because why? He's actually basically the core with Eric. This guy can die so many times. He can drown, which is unbelievably scary and terrifying. The face into the beer trap. Crazy. Getting killed in a tiny cage with nowhere to run. Um... Getting mauled by the werewolf outside, which could also be Emma, actually, while crying out. Yeah, he's 100% up here, too. I'd actually put it above Emma, too, as well. Damn, thus far, the quarry is... <laughs> One thing they really need with the single outstanding games, you know, like Under Dawn and the quarry, the deaths are crazy. Like they need to be. Like mentioned, if you have a game like this where all your choices can lead to insane deaths, you need to have deaths that back that up. And this is the case here. Laura. Honestly, the death with the mirror shards is cool. Beyond that, there's not too much though. She got really good deaths a few ones she has, but they're not that insane. There's not a particularly standard one that I would consider too high up. I'd put her somewhere. Yeah, around here. Like I mentioned, one of the mirror shards is pretty brutal, but like not that insane. Now, fuck that. This is literally the lamest deaths in the entire game. Max has only one way to die, it happened to me, and it's so stupid. Stay on the yard or not, hmm, maybe I need to max out, you know, on, on the land to help his friends. Oh, randomly, the werewolf appears in front of you and just... And done. Fuck that. Lamest death in the entire series. 100%. I hate it. It's so lame. Like, we barely get to see Max and then he has only one way to die. It's something as stupid as that. I was so mad about it. Again, at that point, it was didn't matter anymore anyways. I already had like four people dead, but like... Mm. Unbelievable. And honestly... Same with Nick. These two, man. These two. If I ever were to wanting to rewrite the quarry, you'd have to start right from the beginning because... You need to, if you don't want these characters to always get infected in some way, the entire story would change. So if you were to ever wanting to rewrite this, the quarry, good luck. It's really not easy. But man, both of these characters only have one death. And they're so plain and boring. I don't know. The one with Nick, you you barely even decide yourself. You like can't even, maybe you like maybe you don't even notice the, the prompt and, you know, that, that's in front of you with like, hey, you want to wanna shoot or not or prevent that from happening. I don't know, it's very lame. 
my game. Ryan? I wouldn't consider any of his tests particularly among the best, but he got some really solid ones. Really, really solid. Honestly, on Ashley level even. Why? He got the one with the shotgun in the face. Um, the car crash is really cool. The one where he bleeds out is very memorable. Um, and then obviously the one at the end where he just gets a set ripped off into the final center with Salas. Very good deaths. Same with Bobby. Bobby has, I think, only two ways to die. Oh, wait, I think he only has one. Does he only have one? He has a death where he just gets overcome in the battle with the werewolf. But yeah, that's it. It's only dead one death, but that's a really good one. It's a really, that's a really solid one. It's not too insane, and it's more like down here. But that's a really good death. Yeah, it's a very brutal one because it also leads to the entire massacre that ensues around, you know, the the Hackett's quarry, uh, the Hackett's camp, or uh, Hackett's house. But yeah, really good. Now, Caleb is an interesting case. Um, because he... What actually means interesting case? He has two ways to die, and like a sister who always dies in the same way. Like mentioned, I could put Kaylee into the conversation too, and just say shit. it's pretty lame. Because it's always the same death, and it's always just a random gunshot, and you barely know the character. So I could keep her in filler, or like... Guess I put it here. Yeah. Might as well, <laughs> while we at it. For Caleb, though, he gets some more exciting options. So first of all, because he can survive, so his deaths aren't actually always a thing. But his deaths that can happen are like getting shot. And the freezer. That's really good. The freezer is really good. Getting trapped in, into the freezer as a werewolf. Mm, that can be pretty mean. I like that. Definitely going up here. And now. She has two ways to die, but we all think about that one, we all think about the image of that one. It's a similar case to Abigail. It doesn't have the same story in bank, but that shot with Constance where she gets her face blown off. It's one of the most iconic in the series. Technically, it's only a simple gunshot, but what we make of it and how it happens and how abrupt it is and the end result of it, it is one of the best, for sure. I think I put it down here though. Oh, I could actually... Sp I have to check again. I think I made it a... Honorable mention? For the quarry? Because I think I've mentioned all the deaths I had. Jacob drowns in here. Constance getting shot. The Kayla thing with Caitlyn. Dylan loses the hands. And Nick with Abigail. Did I, in the honorable mentions, mention the one with Emma? Because like mentioned, I'm just wondering how it done back then, if I would put that content one over it. I mean, I guess because, yeah, they didn't make it into the ranking. So I guess we have to put it like this. Chris only has one death. Yeah, literally only one. And it's like, it's a gunshot. It's a gunshot to the face. You know, it's not too insane or something, but it's also not lame. It's still pretty impactful death, so yeah, we put it here. Jedediah is a similar case. He has two ways to die. Either getting the head, the neck snapped by Laura, or getting brutalized by the werewolf. Both are pretty solid, but nothing too crazy. I would just put him here too. Um, like that. Like, yeah, they just, it's okay. It's a cool way for, to die, but like nothing too crazy. So, perfect for here. Travis. Travis goes up here, for sure. Again, no particular death that I would specifically say is among the best in the series. But like, he can get his head blown and ripped off in so many different ways. It's definitely somewhere here. Right next to Laura, I think makes sense. Solid. Eliza is a character that will always die, no matter what. You can just choose how. Either she dies of an explosion, or she dies by the spew through the thing. Which, yeah, like mentioned, many of these deaths that always can happen tend to be not too crazy. Like mentioned, I think the decapitation of the stranger is definitely still the best when it comes to that. 
Actually, Dar Smalling is also like mentioned pretty solid. Actually, Beth's death is also pretty good. Yeah, so like mentioned, some characters that always stand in only if they one death still can be pretty solid. Yeah, I like Kaylee. <laughs> Silas has a couple of cool ways to die. One that I like in particular is when Laura does her final shot. Oh, mate. Hmm. Do I need to put Laura up there after all now? One death I really like is after the car crash. Where with literally the last breath, Laura shoots Silas. But then dies too, after injuries. And that's the end. If there was ever to be a The Quarry movie, this would be a very cool finale. Like where every person dies. Again, many people always want like a final girl or like one person to survive. In this case, you could even say, okay, she survives it after all. Oh, actually, I like that one a lot. I don't know, it's such a cool wrap-up. Such a cool finale, in my opinion. Yeah? To have that... To have the werewolf basically overcome you in some way. Yeah, attack you and kill your friends again and blah, blah, blah. And then with your last effort, you can actually take it down. But, like, your life is still over as well. Yeah. Honestly, that is genuinely one of the coolest deaths of the series. And it like it's it's kind of combined together here. Laura's final breath killed Silas in the in, in the same way as it kills her. I like that a lot. It's something many people don't even experience because their car doesn't crash. Um but that death in particular, in my opinion, definitely deserves that. I think it's really, really cool. I don't know, I love the imagery, the imagery to it, the way Silas attacks and then boom, and all you can hear afterwards is like that little ding, ding, ding from the car, because it crashed, really solid, I love it. Oh, we're down to the devil of me, Jesus, it's, we're, we're going over an hour, my voice is, is giving out, but we're finishing this now. Mary and, oh, I can't remember his name. I sadly can't remember his name, but I would 100% consider both of these to have really good deaths. Similar bit to these two. Yeah, always in the beginning of the game, they will always die, but the way they can die is pretty nice. Him either getting killed directly by Dumet or with the poison gas, and her either in the bathtub or also like that. Really, really great. Charlie 100% deserves to be somewhere up here. He has a couple of deaths. He has one of the lamest deaths that I've experienced firsthand with the dropping of the bell, uh, of the beam. But he then also has the one where he gets burned alive. The one on the ship is insane. Oh. Do I need to consider all of the characters into the best steps in the series for the ship alone? Fuck, I think I need to. I think it's similar to Man of Medan in that sense. For Man of Medan, literally all of the characters need to be in the best of the series conversation for that one death in particular. The one with the soldiers that we talked about. That one alone basically qualifies all of them. And I kind of need to do the same here for the, the Devil of Me characters. Because each of them can have that death at the boat. That boat massacre where Dumet just rises from the water. And goes, boom for Erin. Decapitation here. Then does the gas tank thing with, with with uh with Jamie, before then finishing off both um, Kate and and Mark. Shit. <laughs> Shit. That death alone qualifies all of them. They have individually great deaths, by the way, too. Obviously, both Kate and Jamie have the glass door, yeah, where they can get squished, which is one of the most insane visuals in the entire series. We mentioned, like, mentioned Charlie's with, uh, with the burning alive, or the one where he gets his chest ripped open and everything. Erin got that one death um, where she, not just uh, with the inhaler, or, like, with the chamber, but also the one where she gets her eye stabbed, and it then leads to her being all exposed with her heart open like that. Holy... I think Mark is actually the only one that, outside of the 
Bolt has one insanely particular death that I would put out. Honestly, though, yeah, I think Mark is the only one that I will not put up here. I've just mentioned it. Each of the other four characters have at least one individual death that I would consider to be worthy of it. Yeah, the fire for Charlie, the glass over the Sue and Aaron with the eye. Um, did Mark have one? He can only die at the end. Oh, is the page not working? Shit, I think the page ain't working probably. Oh, my Wi-Fi is going through it. I don't know. Oh, here we go. The ultimatum. Mmm, dead for K2. Yeah. They did an insane job with the devil of me. Honestly, all of the Dark Pictures games, outside of Little Hope, again, Little Hope got that one Andrew death, but uh, the devil of me has so many insane death for everybody. I completely forgot about it. Charlie, like mentioned, the furnace and the decapitation on the boat. Like, mentioned, the boat sequence entirely is its whole thing. Insane. Among the best potential massacres in the series, alongside the Hackett's massacre and stuff like that. Oh. I mean, if I look at it like that, yeah, no, no, no. I wouldn't. I I love the the court. Uh, I love the Hackett's massacre in the in the room where all of the family members get killed after another. But I don't think I should put Bobby and Jedediah up here for that. Constance is enough with the gunshot. The post sequence, like mentioned, is the same in itself, and like mentioned, the deaths in that sequence are also great. Yeah, especially the head for Charlie and the the, the can for for Jamie. But the ultimatum, man. Oh, goodness. The, the acid into the blood and him getting killed by the gas. That entire sequence. Holy moly. It's one of the best in the series. And like I mentioned, Jamie got the glass door and the tank and also the one of the axe in the head. And like I mentioned, Aaron got the eye um, and that surgery thing and the chamber. Yeah. All of the main characters in The Devil and Me have each individual insane deaths and insane group deaths. Or not really all of them dying at the same time, but you know what I mean. Damn. And do Matt. Um, I mean, does he even die? If you think about it, he doesn't even die. <laughs> he comes back at the end, technically. Or at least it's never revealed if it's the same person. If he, if you can consider it his death, the only thing, the only way he can die is with the boat explosion. It's not a, up here, it's here, I guess. But I think I actually have to put him here because I just only now remember I don't think he even dies. <laughs> I don't even think he dies. I think it's never actually confirmed because he reappears at the end. But yeah. It's the tier list. Now that I think about it, though, I think I actually have to do some individual working here then. Because like mentioned that, oh, that hydrochloric acid. Oh, it gets up here. It's even more brutal than a grinder. The furnace with Charlie also insane. Put it over every girl actually. The gassing in the thing is not as insane. Still very good. The glass wall actually the glass wall is so good too. Glass wall is crazy. To be fair, so it's a cocoon thing. The fact, the fact that I have been kept alive for 3,000 years and then getting killed below these kind of crazy think about it, but I think it makes sense. Uh, I think Jamie fits in somewhere here. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Where we just had her. Aaron's eye then too. Getting killed by the gas isn't as crazy. Like, it's so crazy, but I think, yeah, it belongs here. But, yeah, the ass needs to be up here. Honestly, the top three, if you think about it in terms of brutality, easily. Um, oh, by the way. You see, here's now once again the thing. I've definitely ranked some characters for one specific death. But we're also looking at the whole picture. Alright? So, while Josh has the greater individual death, 
Emily definitely has a bigger variety of cool individual devs, so would have to put her above Josh here. I was like, yeah, if I had Josh that ranked as the best one in Until Dawn, so I have to put him over Emily. But Emily is, like, if you think about it, he got one ten ten death. That's like, well, like, one eleven out of 10 death, but she got three 10 out of 10 deaths. What would you rather take, you know? I guess I would keep Emily above him, actually. But yeah, honestly, Salim exacting this death, the cocoon, or even the self incendiary thing, and the acid might be top three. The acid thing is so insane. If you think about it, it's easily among the most brutal things that can happen. Because some of these steps are like very instant and just they look cool, but like for the person itself, it's a quick instant death. Fucking imagine you start to get acid printing poured into your body. Oh, oh, oh I can't even I can't even begin. Holy moly, dude! I can't even describe to think how it would feel. It's only up there, maybe even above Rachel. But again, being stuck in a cocoon forever to never be found is also kind of crazy. <laughs> Crazy how you can have stuff like simple gunshots to, to that. Ah, but I think that's... Again, maybe I'm overrating the Salim death a little bit too much and I'd have to put this even above that. Because Kate has, like mentioned, a lot of variety in deaths too. Because again, we this isn't a ranking of the individual deaths itself. It's about which character has the best deaths overall. So it's kind of a similar case here. Like, Salima is one insanely good one. The rest are, like, fine. Like, they have so many good ones. They're, like, on a similar level, but, like, just multiply it. Yeah. So that means the question is, who is number one? Who got the best deaths overall? Kate or Rachel. It's, be it's honestly between these two. How should I keep Salim on one for the for the thing? For the one particular death? Honestly, no, because like mentioned, it's that's like the only big... Wait, no! Oh, he also got the one where he gets shot by Rachel. Okay, never mind. That one's also insane. Where he gets shot in the elevator, where you think like, hey, he makes it, and then uh, Rachel's like... Pfft. So it's down to between Rachel and Kate, who takes the silver plate. Honestly, as I'm saying, the side of like as it is, getting stuck in a cocoon for the rest of your... everything... is kind of hard to beat. <laughs> so yeah, this is the final ranking now. Okay, we're far over an hour. My voice is... I'm dying. I remember why I didn't do these long Anka videos again anymore. The thing is, I'm I am streaming often for like three or four hours in a row, but obviously there I have breaks and can't focus on gameplay here. Literally now talk for one hour straight. So yeah, this is the final result. Take a big, big look at it. As exhausting as it was, I enjoyed doing a video like this again after a while. And I absolutely want to know if you enjoyed the video and obviously what your thoughts are. How does your ranking look like? How does your tier list look like? Tell me all about it down below in the comments. And as always, if you enjoy what I'm doing, if you want to support me, please leave a sub. Um, it would help me a lot. Check into my streams, like I mentioned. We have so much Super Massive Games content coming up now soon. Um, I'm very excited for all of you to watch it. And I'm just very excited for the games. And then you guys will join me with then, obviously, when we do content to those as well. Ah, oh, upcoming one, two years minimum. We're, we're so through with that alone. For, for that alone, yet yeah, these upcoming one to years we have so much content out of that. I can't wait to know if you can either. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Stay safe, happy, and happy. Have a wonderful remaining game and some to your weekend. And see you soon with much more Super Magic Games content.